Shalom, and uh, we're going we're continuing our study about the differences between the rapture and the second coming, and and uh, I want to just clarify a few things with you. The, the uh, you know the, when the rapture happens, <clears throat> the uh, I believe the day of Yahuwah <clears throat> is tied into the rapture event itself, and the day of of the of Yahuwah, of course, in our English translations, it says the day of the Lord. Um, but in the original Hebrew text, it, it says the day of Yahuwah. And this day that, that it talks about is not a 24-hour time frame, which most people, you know, our thinking today would think of a day as just 24 hours. But in the Hebrew thought, that there's much more involved in that. Um, the Hebrew word for day is yom. And, uh, but the, the day of Yahuwah, which the scripture refers to, I believe is ties in together not only the rapture event itself, but it also, I believe, that the tribulation will start immediately after the rapture, the seven-year time frame referred to as Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. Uh, the reason there's the reasons I believe this, and of course, there's, it, the scripture really doesn't state that specifically, but I believe that, it, that the uh, rapture will trigger uh, the tribulation or seven-year time frame uh, you'll notice that when you study in the book of Revelation, uh, after the church has been raptured uh, to, uh, in the book of Revelation chapter 4 uh, and chapter 5, you'll see that the saints you know, are praising our Savior, Yahushua, uh, for the work that he has done. And uh, immediately uh, in that sequence of events, the sealed judgments begin to be released upon the earth. Um, I mentioned to you, my, if you, any of y'all that have listened to my rapture dream that I had about three weeks ago, um, you'll find this on my YouTube channel, but um, in that dream that I had, which was real powerful, it, I, I've never had dreamed about the rapture until that time, and uh, one of the things that, that really uh, was brought to my attention in such a strong way that it was a day of, of uh, just an ordinary day. It was uh, a day of uh, bright, sunshiny day. It was, <clears throat> like I said, an ordinary day where, in other words, it was nothing unusual happening during that time frame. Um, I've mentioned the fact is that that's one of the biggest signs I believe that the rapture could happen any moment is because there's nothing, say, major. Now, there's a whole lot of trouble going on, on the earth. There's a whole lot of things going on but there's nothing that's say major where uh you know like like uh israel being at war say with uh these other countries where you know nuclear warfare is happening anything where of a major event and all these things are on the horizon in other words you know the uh i believe that the battle of, of the ezekiel battle in 38 30, chapter 38 39 the battle of gog and magog is on the horizon. The players are already in place uh, for that to happen. And uh, so, but because the Messiah said it would be an ordinary day, it would be as the days of Noah and Lot, that people were just going about their everyday life. They were marrying, giving in marriage, and so forth. That it was just an ordinary day, people going about their business, not recognizing that judgment was about to hit. And so when the rapture happens, uh, it's not only be it's gonna be a great day for the church and for the believers, uh, because we're 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 experiencing our total redemption at that time, and then we're going to be with the Messiah. There'll never be a time frame where we'll not be with Him. <laughs> well, that's a comforting thought to think about. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more pain. All the former things will be uh, gone away, and uh, to be in His presence is fullness of joy. I mean, this is a great. It is the blessed hope of the church. But the, but the day of the Lord, or the day of Yahuwah, is, is a day of, of gloominess and darkness. And that's one of the things that in my dream that I had, that as I mentioned to you, that um, how this sequence of event, events with my dream played out was I was walking through my house, and it was a bright, sunshiny day. I just happened to look outside, or as I was going from one room to the other, I looked to my left, and out of the blinds, you know, it was like I said, it was uh, it had been bright sunshiny, 
when I looked out there again, it was total dark darkness. And I knew then something major was about to happen. It was just like, you know, you, know, you see uh, brightness of sunshine and right in the middle of the day, and then all of a sudden it becomes pitch black dark. It doesn't, we didn't just get cloudy like it was about to rain. It, it got pitch black dark darkness. And then that's when I felt this energy coming into my body and that I be, began to ascend. And uh, I knew then, I said, uh, I thought, thought came to me that this has actually happened. The rapture is here. But then also the, the realization that people were being left behind and the, the fear that, that they might experience because of what was now happening, uh, I began to, to sense that. And I began to, to, to you know, feel what it might feel like to be left behind. So, but it was a day of darkness. It was a day of gloominess. And so that confirmed to me that the, when the rapture takes place, that it also will be the time that the tribulation or the day of judgment begins for the world, this seven-year time frame of judgment. Now, it won't be the final judgment that they will face, but it'll be the judgment that's coming on this earth um, for, for reasons to remove the sinners off of it and also to, to uh, bring Yasharel or Israel to the point of recognizing who their Messiah is. Okay, I'm going to stop it here, then we'll pick it up at our next session. Um, and uh, I want to encourage y'all to listen to the videos I've done, not only just on the rapture, but there's a whole lot of things I have taught about. If you're interested in learning about Hebrew and about the name of the Creator and how I know I've done six years of study, and there's others as well know that the name of the Creator is pronounced as Yahuwah. He's not referred to as Yahweh, as a lot of people who have uh, been misled in that area to think that his name is Yahweh. It's totally impossible for his name to be pronounced that way. I've done videos on that. But his name is Yahuwah, and his name is in the original text over 7,000 times and been replaced with words like Lord and God. And so as you begin to study this out, you'll begin to understand why I use the name of the Creator so much. is because it's in the original text. And of course, the name of the Mashiach, or the Messiah, being Yahusha, and his name translated from Hebrew means Yahuwah is Savior or Salvation. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you on our next broadcast. Shalom.